if you profile any kind of web application, the URL will be the primary focus of your performance investigation. The URL is the basic unit that the client has to wait for. So JProfiler can split the call tree and you can analyze the fine-grained CPU data in the context of the invoking URL. That's a very useful capability to have to solve performance problems. However, in a real system, if you split the call tree for each and every URL and include the entire information that is available in the URL, the call tree will become very broad and it will be difficult to find things and to get a good performance overview of the different types of URLs. So we want to tell JProfiler which parts of the URL should be used for grouping. JProfiler is very configurable in that respect, so let's try it out. We go to the session settings, activate the JE and probes tab, and look for the servlets probe, which is responsible for URL splitting. For our discussion, we're interested in the bottom part of this config panel. URL splitting in the call tree is enabled by default, and JProfile uses the request URI for call tree splitting. It ignores all the query parameters, and for each distinct request URI, it splits the call tree into a different subtree. If this is not what we want, we can set up a custom script that uses the information in the HTTP server request to build a string that is then used for grouping. Let's click on Edit Scripts here. The first thing that strikes us here is that this is actually a list of scripts. So which script is JProfiler going to execute? The answer is JProfiler executes all configured scripts in order to create multiple nested splitting levels in the call tree. When we click on the Add button here, JProfiler suggests a number of commonly used splitting strategies. And the first one here, split by request URI, is actually the same as the default option that we saw in the parent window. So let's choose this option and check out what the script looks like. There are two parameters that are passed to the script. The first is the script context, which allows you to store data across subsequent invocations of the script. We won't be doing that in this demo. And the second parameter, more importantly, gives you access to the current HTTP servlet request that is in progress while the script is being called. And you can call all the API methods on the servlet request to build the string that you have to return from the script. And there are two ways that you can write the script, either as an expression like this without semicolons or with semicolons and return statements. So this is the same as this. Now let's add this script to our list of scripts. A good idea for a second splitting level is a username that is stored in the HTTP session. Now the template that is offered by JProfiler to split by session values happens to do just that. Now this is an example of a slightly more complex script and it incidentally works with the demo session that we're profiling right now. The script retrieves the HTTP session from the servlet request if it exists, then it extracts the user attribute, and if that is non-null, then it returns it, otherwise it says unauthenticated. We can add the script as is. Two splitting levels are enough for a first experiment, so let's check and see what happens when we apply these new profiling settings. We have to wait a little for new CPU profiling data to be recorded. But when it's there, we can see that on the first level, we still have the request URIs corresponding to the first script that we've configured. Below that, we can now see the usernames that have been extracted from the HTTP sessions. When profiling a real server, this would allow us to isolate one particular user and run experiments whose performance could then be analyzed without getting the interference from everybody else. This is just one example of a useful HTTP request splitting configuration. There are lots of other script combinations that make sense depending on your use cases.